What's happening, traders? It's Mark here coming at you with today's recap on the E-mini futures. And uh, I got something interesting I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, two different objectives on the chart. Okay, so first things first, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a chart of the E-mini Russell. All right, I wanted to do something different today. We've been taking a look at the S&P e-mini and the Nasdaq e-mini quite frequently over the last couple of weeks so I wanted to mix things up for you guys and I've always felt that you have to be diversified when you trade the e-mini futures uh, if, if you just fall in love with one symbol you know I think you're doing yourself a big disservice um, it's just smarter to always have um, you know a watch list of doesn't have to be thousands of symbols right just four or five symbols I think is all you need to watch and um, I think you're gonna find that the Russell e-mini in fact let me just write out the symbol here so the symbol for the Russell guys is RTY all right for you uh, experienced futures traders and uh, for you non experienced traders uh, or for those of you guys that trade stocks uh, I believe the uh, Russell index on the stock world is IWM I believe is the symbol um, but yeah, so the Russell is, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good symbol. I like it. Let's get into what today's setups look like. And of course, guys, what you see on the chart here, this green and red color band is the volume indicator that's been layered on top of the chart. Um, the only thing that this volume indicator does is identify the starting point of a trend for you. Okay, you've heard me say this a million times at this point. If you can't get the direction right, you ain't never going to make any money trading. It's just that simple. Getting the direction right, okay, knowing what direction the market is going, if it's going up or if it's going down, obviously that is an important piece of information you need to be mindful of. In fact, that's the only piece of information you need to be mindful of, right? Everything else, which is... Uh, opening up a potential trade, placing your stops. I mean, that's all secondary. The number one most important primary tool that you need to find success is an indicator that gets the direction right. Okay, so that's what this green and red volume indicator does. I think it does a world class job. Um, all you guys out there again who are actively using the vol, thank you for your feedback. Means a lot to me. I might not always be able to respond back to every each and every one of you, but uh, I certainly appreciate the feedback, and I'm glad you are finding success with it. So let's talk about today's setups, and let me educate you on a really interesting way to squeeze as much as you can out of this trend. Okay. So today, the volume indicator turned green right over here at about, uh, this looks like about 8.50-ish. So let's go ahead and label this here. Long signal at 8.50 a.m. This is central time, guys. So this would be, you know, 9.50 if you're on the eastern time zone part of the country, or this would be 6.50 a.m. if you're on Pacific time, California and whatnot. Um, so look, just because you get a signal at 8.50 a.m. doesn't mean that you randomly go long and just hope for the best, right? You really have to look at every single signal that prints on your chart and evaluate it very quickly, okay? Because as you know, the futures markets uh, move very fast, so you have maybe 30 to, 30 to 60 seconds, I would say, to make an educated decision on is this a trade you want to take? Does it meet your risk to reward parameters? Or you might want to take a pass, right? Those are the three outcomes, I think, on any potential setup. So let me let me zoom in here and let's talk to you about what was interesting about this setup from today. All right, let's really zoom in here and uh, take a look. So Guys, whenever the volume switches color, meaning whenever it goes from red into green as it did today at 8.50 in the morning, um, you're going to get an arrow on top of that bar and you're going to get an audio alert, all right, in case you are roaming around your house or you're not at your computer, as long as you have your speakers on, then you were alerted today. But if you take a look at this bar here, which I'm going to call the signal bar, all right, this, this arrow that's on top of this bar, this is what I'm going to call the signal bar. 
you can see that it looks a little bit longer and larger than some of the other bars, right? And that is because while this bar was forming, all right, it opened as a green bar. But while it was forming, it came down a little bit, right? The price came down a little bit, creating this very, very long wick. Make sense? Eventually, the bar did close green, all right? And, that, and that's really the, the most important part of, of what we care about. What color did the bar close? And did the color of the bar match up to the color of the volume indicator? All right? So... Let me, let me get this out of the way here for a second. Um, your only opportunity to go long this market comes on the open of the next bar. Makes sense? And whenever you open up a position, immediately you need to know where to place your stop, right? Now, typically what I like to do is use the low of the signal bar as my potential stop. To me, that's a logical area on where to place the stop. Uh, it just makes sense that, you know, as the price was coming down a little bit, the buyers came in right on the low of this wick here and just pushed it up, right? So this, this section of the chart right here is a pretty statistically significant area in the chart. You kind of have to be mindful of that and, 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 and be able to spot that whenever you get these types of what I call long wick bars. Make sense? Now, for those of you guys out there who might not want to use this as your stop, for whatever reason, maybe you feel that, you know, this is too large of a stop or this doesn't meet your risk to reward profile, no problem, all right? A, a, a different way or a different location, I should say, to place your stop is maybe you think about placing it on the same bar that you entered it on. Makes sense? So essentially, instead of placing it here, which in my opinion is the logical area, if you are looking for extremely tight stops, you might even think about putting it on the same bar that you entered on, right? And you know, there's pros and cons to doing this. I think there's a lot more pros than there are cons. Uh, you know, the risk you take with having too tight of a stop is, you know, what if the market came down a, just a little bit like this, gave you a small wick like this, and, and you know, then your stop would get taken out and the, the market just rips without you, right? But typically speaking, um, you can see that these type of long wick bars don't actually happen that often. So I've been experimenting with this and it's, it's been working out pretty well. Uh, you, you guys know that I, I love the idea of small stops. Um, small stops and large gains are really the secret to making a lot of money day trading, especially in the E-mini futures space. Uh, but, you know, this is just something interesting that I want to share with you guys on how to cut your risk down even more. So again, just to recap, all right, if you, for, for whatever reason, if you don't want to use the logical area on where to place your stop, which should always be on the low of the signal bar if it's green and of course if it's you know if it's short you would just reverse it you'd put it on the high of a red bar right but for those of you who want to cut your risk down even more yeah you could certainly think about moving your stop on the low of the very same bar that you entered on and I'm gonna show you one more thing guys all right you're, you're gonna find this uh, even more powerful than what I just showed you here and how to cut your risk all right let me let me press this F button here on the right uh, to fit this back to scale and um, you know you can see that uh, this long signal here on the e-mini futures Russell uh, <laughs> really worked out very well today uh, it was a quiet market elsewhere, but on the Russell, it was it was just on fire today. What you could do is if you wanted to lock in, right? You wanted to lock in some of your gains because you can see here that the vol turned red, although there's a color mismatch here. So even this is a false bar, but say the vol does turn red, right? And, and, and the market decides to sell off like this. Well, you want to lock in some of these gains, right? That's just the smart thing to do. So what you could think about doing is you could trail your stop on every reversal bar. Makes sense? So this is a reversal bar right here. In fact, let me just draw every reversal bar. Here's a reversal bar. That's why I moved the stop up there. Here's another reversal bar. 
and here is the third and final reversal bar okay as the market's trending up this is a reversal bar as well but in this case the market's trending down makes sense so uh, let me clean this up a little bit here so now that you know what the reversal bars are uh, all I did here was I moved my stop up from you know from this area here the very tight stop I moved it up to one tick here below the reversal then I move it up here on the next reversal bars close and then I move it up finally over here and this gets taken out for a really nice 220 tick winner okay using nothing more than a simple color-coded volume band that look I've always said volume tells you the truth volume is the only thing that does not lie to you and I think that if you believe in trend trading then volume will just make sense all right uh, vo volume is considered to be a leading indicator not a lagging indicator like so many of all those other e-mini futures trading indicators and Bollinger Bands and stochastics and all this other nonsense right what was complicated about what I showed you today right 850 a.m. We only had one signal today from the morning session. Once again, guys, you've heard me say this before. Three or four hours a day trading the morning session is all you need, typically speaking. And if you do the math on this, right, on the Russell guys, it is uh, $5 a tick. Um, so do the math. 220 times 5. It's a little under $1,000. That's just on one contract. All right. Imagine the gains on more than one contract, like two contracts, four contracts, like many of my customers do. Um, so this is how you win, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you put together a very comprehensive, very simple e-mini future strategy, but also something that just makes sense. Guys, that'll do it for this video. If you'd like to get your hands on this powerful volume indicator, then get in touch, call, text, email, whatever's convenient, and I'd be happy to hook you up with a free one-on-one -on -one demo, really show you how this volume indicator is going to supercharge your trading. Guys, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next trade.